Yeah. What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be giving you my first impressions on the DJI Ronin S. I'm going to be talking about build quality, ease of use, why I chose the DJI Ronin S over something like the Crane 2, as well as some pros and cons to the Ronin S. The first thing you're going to notice when you take it out of the box is this thing is solid. It's very well built. The materials are very nice. Nothing on here feels cheap. It really seems like DJI really thought about every little piece on this gimbal, from the hand grip to the grip that you put your hand on is very comfortable. All the knobs, the little cover, port covers, the focus wheel, everything is flawless. This is a pretty standard one hand gimbal design. It has the lower motor at the back so you can see the screen when you're using it. Uh, one of the biggest differences is the trigger and I'll get to that later. But overall, great design, great build quality, no complaints there. Pretty much any gimbal on the market you find today, if your camera fits on, it's pretty much gonna give you smooth results. It's no different with this one. If you're within the weight limit, you're gonna have smooth shots. So smoothness is really not a factor when getting the gimbal because they are pretty much smooth. If you mount the camera properly, it's in the weight limit, and you use it properly, you're gonna get smooth shots. That's just what it is. So when it comes down to buying a gimbal, you wanna make sure you get a gimbal that's easy to use. You can go on YouTube all day long and pretty much find smooth shots from any gimbal if the user's using it properly but you need to know which gimbal is right for you based on what you do with the gimbal and how easy it is to use and learn and set up and things like that. So the first thing you're gonna do with the gimbal obviously is mounting your camera. How easy is it to mount your camera? Well, it's pretty much like everything else. You have a Manfrotto style quick release plate which fits on my tripod and my slider so I can easily transfer the camera from the gimbal to something like my slider or my tripod and not waste any time. Obviously you balance the camera on all axes front and back here, up and down here, left and right, and forward the backwards here on the pan axis, and it's just as quick and easy as any other gimbal, so that's no problem there. You got all your markings so you can remember your combinations and your numbers and stuff like that you do have for different lens setups and camera setups, so you can do it quickly next time you balance it. So balancing, it's not a problem. Now once your camera is balanced, it's actually time to use the gimbal, and this is the way it really shines. All your different modes and everything are easily accessed. You can access three custom modes right here by pressing the M button and it'll switch between the different modes that you have set up in the DJI app. I think the biggest feature is the trigger. The trigger is probably the best thing about this gimbal and it's one of the main reasons why I chose to get this one versus something else. All the trigger basically does is hold the camera in position. So you can move it around while you're holding the trigger and once you have it in that position and you let the trigger go, it stays in that position until you change it. So when you're doing a lot of run and gun video, that allows you to switch between the modes very seamlessly. I can follow somebody and track somebody like I would normally do, any action that's going on up and down. And then if my subject stops, I can just hold the trigger, you know, get the shot like I need, let it go. It goes back to normal like it always was. And then, you know, if I need to go low on the slung mode, I can just hold the trigger down. If I need to go to sport mode, I can hold the M down at the back, go back into normal mode, trigger, normal mode, reset the gimbal, move the gimbal with the joystick, reset the gimbal. It just does everything just so smooth. So no matter what's going on in your shot, everything is instantly accessible to you right in front of your face. One thing I see a lot of people asking questions about is how to enter under slung mode to get the down low shots. Basically DJI says there's two ways to do this properly. The easiest way is just to hold the trigger down and lower the camera just like this. But as you can see, if you have a big lens on the camera, this may not work for you. So that might not be an option, but there's another way. What I see a lot of people try to do is go this way and it works, but it kind of spazzes out a little bit. And I don't think that's too healthy for the gimbal. Well, let me show you. You see how, it, yeah, that's, I don't think that's too great. But don't worry, there's nothing wrong with the gimbal. You're just not doing it right. If you double tap the power button twice, the gimbal pauses. So now you're free to move the gimbal around however you need to. So now with the motors paused, I can just literally flip the camera upside down, turn it back on, and we're good to go. Another comment I commonly see about this gimbal is how much it weighs. Yes, it is not lightweight by any means. Yes, this thing is heavy, but it is not as heavy as people made it seem to be. Feels very 
very solid and i don't it doesn't feel like weight that's like unnecessary weight it's like this thing is very well built so the weight that comes from it is just basically because it uses good materials like you have big motors on here all of this is metal you have nice rubberized grip it has a tripod on it you got a focus wheel it's very solid so the weight is there but it's not like ridiculous where it's like oh my goodness i have to hold this gimbal up for five hours like if you want to go try to vlog with it then i hope it's a short vlog because i wouldn't want to do this all day unless you're going to be walking around with it in your hand the whole time entirely then yeah you might complain but i mean most shots you're going to be shooting for like 30 seconds at a time or whatever so it's not that big of a deal it just depends on what you're going to do with it now as far as cons uh this one i don't really think it's a con but some people would think it is the battery is not removable but i rather it this way because first of all you can charge the gimbal right here in the front without having to take any batteries out or have any external additional chargers or little batteries to worry about it's all just built in good to go now eventually you'll be able to buy more grips so and the grip is easily detachable so it's not that big of a deal this is basically your removable battery all of the, all of the hardware in the ronin s is literally in the top part this is basically just a battery so if you do go over your 12 hour battery life or if you forget to charge it it does have quick charging so it doesn't take that long to charge but if you're in a pinch you need an extra battery you can just slide on another grip that you might have already charged just like an external battery without the hassle of having external batteries another thing you might complain about is if you're shooting with this thing a long time if you're shooting with this thing for a long time the joystick is really nice but it's kind of sharp so if you're holding the weight of this in your hand and you're using the joystick a lot, you can get a little annoying on your thumb, but it is removable. So, so you probably have third-party joysticks down the line to just replace it with different styles and lengths and stuff like that. So it's not really that big of a deal either. The biggest thing you probably can complain about right now is the lack of accessories because it just came out. But this thing is ready for all kind of attachments. You have a focus wheel on the side, which is removable. You can put it on both sides. You can plug other accessories into here. You have accessory ports up here, up here. You have extensions, all kind of things you can add to this gimbal. So once they're released, I feel like this is gonna be a very good ecosystem to invest your money into. And that also brings me to another point of why I chose this gimbal over something like the Crane 2. Being DJI, you know you're gonna have tons and tons of accessories and third party accessories and all kinds of things to go for this gimbal. It's kind of like GoPro, even though you know GoPro doesn't always make the best camera, you know it's gonna have tons of accessories from all kinds of manufacturers to support the GoPro. So it makes sense to buy into the ecosystem. So all in all, I think this is a win for DJI. This is their first one-handed gimbal and if this is what they came up with on their first try, then I think they took a lot of time developing this. But all in all, great product from DJI. Very solid, very easy to use. I can definitely say it's the best one-handed gimbal out there currently. I'm pretty sure most people wanted it because of this. You get all this for $700. I definitely wasn't expecting it to be that low and DJI is known for being very competitive with the price, but I wasn't expecting that one. They pretty much made it a no-brainer when trying to choose between this or the Crane 2. But I know the Crane 3 is releasing very soon, so keep your eyes out on that. But, but if you're on the fence between this and the Crane 2, get this. Hands down, every day of the week, all day, twice on Sunday. That's pretty much it for my first impressions on this gimbal. I will be doing a video on five different hacks and tips for the Ronin S, so stay tuned for that one. Make sure you subscribe, like, follow me on Instagram, and I will see you guys next time.